happening, people? Welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield Showdown session. Today, we're going to be messing around with a team that I think might be pretty interesting. I mostly just threw this together because it has some mons that I wanted to test out. Um, so we're going to run you through the team, and then we'll hop in the OU ladder just to see how it does. I have no idea how well this is going to work. Right, it will be my first session with these boys. So first of all, we got our boy Dragapult. And I really just kind of wanted to use this thing because I like its typing. Dragon Ghost is a really good offensive typing. Uh, we toss the choice specs on there because it's going to make it an absolute problem. Uh, with the Infiltrator ability, we can get three substitutes, which is great. And we are working with Draco Meteor, Shadow Ball, Flamethrower, and U-Turn. So uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of specs Dragapult, so maybe we could catch some people off guard with that. Uh, we are just going to be Timid, uh, Max Special Attack, and Speed. So this thing is going to be a nice little heavy hitter. Next up, we have one of my favorite new Pokemon in this generation, and that is the boy Scorch. With the unique typing, the Fire Bug makes this thing super weak to rock. Uh, so we don't want to switch into to Stealth Rock, so we just tossed on the Heavy Duty Boots. Got this guy a whole bunch of pairs of boots on, and that is going to prevent the effects of Trap Set on the battlefield. So we don't take uh, Hazard Damage, which is really cool. Also with the Flash Fire ability, this thing pairs nicely with our Galarian Darmanitan and Excadrill, so we can switch into Fire Moves nicely. We're working with Fire Lash, which is an interesting move that uh, lowers the target's defense by one. Then we got Leech Life. And uh, Power Whip and Coil. So if this thing can Dynamax and start setting up some coils, I think, uh, I think we're going to have ourselves an interesting time. It's going to be a bulky boy. So bulky physical sweeper sent to Scorch. Interested to see how well that does. Next up, we had to bring the little Jelly Ditto. And that's mostly just because this thing, it's honestly kind of necessary. From what I've seen so far um, in OU, this thing is a really good answer to a lot of Dynamax things. If we start to get set up on, this thing can come in. We can copy it stat boost, and with the Choice Scarf, we're actually uh, able to um, outspeed and be a better version of whatever is trying to set up on us. So it's a, one of the best revenge sweeper or revenge killers in the game. So gotta have Ditto there. Next up, we have another new Pokemon, which is Grimmsnarl. So uh, Grimmsnarl, this is actually a set that my boy Envy made. He was in the last showdown, last showdown live session. If you watched that, um, got the black glasses on this thing just to get a little bit of extra damage on our dark moves, which I think is interesting. Also, this thing probably looks just cool as hell with dark black glasses on, so. Uh, we also have the Prankster ability, which allows us to get a priority bulk up. Which could be good against physical attackers. If we get that bulk up, this thing's already naturally bulky as hell. Uh, with that 192 HP and rest in attack. Also, we got some speed investment there. Um, I think that this thing could be could be an issue. If we get up some bulk ups, <coughs> potential Dynamax Mon. I'm excited to see how this thing does. Grimmsnarl, uh, just a really cool type, cool typing with a Dark and Fairy. So, next up we can have Gar Galarian Darmanitan, which I wanted to use this thing just because last time I used the Choice Band set. Uh, if you're familiar, Guerrilla Tactics is basically just a built-in Choice Band. Um, so it boosts your attack, but you're only allowed to use the first selected move. So built-in Choice Band paired with a, a, a Choice Scarf. We're going to be fast as hell, and we're able to hit extremely hard so we're rocking u-turn ice go crash flare blitz and earthquake pretty standard on this thing just gonna be max attack and speed and then last but not least we do have the excadrill the reason for that is i needed a stealth rocker and i also kind of wanted to have a rapid spinner as well so with the focus sash we're able to guarantee stealth rock up turn one if we decide to lead with this thing also we have rapid spin um which does boost your speed in this generation and then earthquake and iron head for coverage we are just going to be max speed and attack and excadrill is seeming to be a problem so far so, uh, let's go ahead and just get right into it. Um, we're going to get into some OU. I did have this battle up as I started recording and then realized that I, I didn't click the freaking record button. So, I actually I just ran from that one. But, first battle with this team, we are going to go ahead and see how these bad boys do. So, what do you have there? He's got the Cursula. I have not seen a Cursula yet. He's got the Beresciuda. Uh, interesting little fishy boy. So, this guy's got some pretty... Pretty scary mons. We also see the Mew, so you never really know what to expect from that thing. Um, expected lead. I don't know if Cursula, what Cursula even does, but I've actually come to realize that Evil like Cursula is actually a lot better than Cursula. So interesting to see that. We're just gonna lead Excadrill as he goes Mew. Um, so since he leads Mew, we're expecting this thing to probably just be a Hazards one. So we're just gonna set up our Stealth Rock turn one, as it's gonna help us out a little bit. He's got that Corviknight. Uh, the Arcanine's not gonna like that too much. And interested to see what this Mew wants to do. It's actually wild. You can only get Mew um, in the actual games from, I think, using the Pokeball Plus. I think. I'm not really entirely sure. This thing's actually going to Dragon Dance. Oh, Jesus. This thing's about to be a threat. 
Well, in that case, we're just gonna go ahead and <laughs> click some earthquakes, try to get some damage here. He's actually gonna have drain punch. So drain punching Mew um, is scary. So we're gonna go down to this thing next turn, but we could switch into Dragapult. We'll be able to outspeed. If he goes for the drain punch again, which I assume he will, unless he predicts the switch, we'll be able to bring Dragapult in safely and then finish it with a Shadow Ball. So we're gonna go for that. It's an easy predictable move as he goes for another Dragon Dance, yep. Um, so this thing is scary. I think we have to click Dynamax here. If we have, if we want any chance of being able to outspeed, if this thing has Shadow Ball, I don't think, or to be able to take a hit, not outspeed. If this thing has Shadow Ball, we're probably dead. We're gonna click Dynamax. Let's go for, let's go for this bad boy. So we're gonna get huge and he does have the Darkest Lariat. So, luckily Dynamax was able to allow us to take that. I do believe it doubles your HP, so I think it means that if we didn't Dynamax, it would have done double the amount of damage. So, uh, that one did, that Darkest Lariat did 53%, so we probably would have died there, which is interesting. So, now he's gonna bring in the Corviknight. And we have Max Flare for this in the Flamethrower slot, so we're just gonna go ahead and click that. I don't know how much this is gonna do. The good thing about Dynamaxing is now we're able to switch our moves, even though we have the choice specs. Um, I'm pretty sure that we do still get the effective items even though it allows you to switch because you do still take life warp damage. So we're just going to click Max max Flare here, see how much it's going to do. Uh, the Corviknight unfortunately does live. It eats its Salak Berry, which is going to boost its speed, and now it's going to bulk up. Oh man. Yo, this Corviknight is a problem. So the worst thing about this is that we've actually kind of used our Dynamax a little bit early. I felt like it was necessary against the Mew. Um, but we're just gonna click Max Flare again here as we do still actually outspeed even after that Zalic Berry Dragapult too quick, boy. So we're freed from the Dynamax, the sun is up. Meaning we're gonna get some more damage on Flamethrowers if we decide to go for that. He doesn't really have anything. Does not have much. He's gonna bring in the Arcanine. Um, so we do get to choose our Choice Specs move again here. So the Arcanine is gonna take some Stealth Rock damage. I'm interested just to see how much a Draco Meteor is gonna do. I'm pretty sure that's just gonna knock you out. We're just gonna click that. Draco Meteor does connect. Yeah, that's a dead Arcanine. Dragapult is an absolute threat. We do lose some special attack there, so we're sitting at 223 at the moment, not the best. He is going to bring in the Cursula. Um, I want to save Dragapult because we can bring this thing in and get a nice uh, spec Shadow Ball against this thing later. No idea what Cursula is going to do other than like potentially go for like a Will-O-Wisp. We could decide to bring in Grimmsnarl, which I think is probably the best option here, but if we get Will-O-Wisp, that's not going to have not going to be nice. I literally do not know what Cursula wants to do here. I don't think it's going to will wisp I'm sure he's probably just going to go for a ghost move. I kind of want to bring in the Scorch. Let's bring in the Scorch, just because we can, as he's actually going to substitute, so... Not the best for us. We can go for a five. We could actually set up Coils. But since this thing has the Substitute up, let's just go for the Fire Lash, just while the sun's up. I do believe Cursula is pretty damn bulky. So he's going to set up a Calm Mind, which is interesting. Um... Don't know how much damage this thing is going to do to us. We do have the ability to just bring in our Ditto, copy this thing's stat boost later so we have an easy switch in. So we're not really too worried. We're just going to Fire Lash to just, just to try to get some more damage here. And uh, old Mushu over here. This thing is going to Dynamax. So he does use his Dynamax. And uh, this thing has an interesting ability, which actually sets up a, sets up a Parish Song, which is not something I knew. That, what a crazy... I feel bad for young Corsola. They really did this boy dirty. I mean, the coral reefs are dying, but okay, so um, we outsped there. We're just going to click Fire Lash. That's a dead Cursula. Look at Scorch. out here doing it. We were able to take that Max Phantasm just because we are bulky as hell. Next, he's going to bring in his Dragapult. Um, so, assuming... So, we are timid, so my Dragapult should be able to have a speed tie with this thing if it's max speed. Um, Ditto's probably the safer bet, though. We're just going to stay in here and probably just click Fire Lash. I don't think Dragapult sets up at all. So, let's just, yeah, let's just go for the Fire Lash here. He's just going to finish with, with a Dragon Pulse. That is fine. And uh, this thing has Leftovers. So, it's a Leftovers Dragapult, which is interesting. Um, we can actually just bring in, bring in Grimmsnarl, which is a direct answer to Dragapult. So, Grimmsnarl coming in. And all of our new Gen 8 boys is doing work right now so all he has left is the dragapult and the barrascuta we could go for a bulk up but i don't think that's the best option here we're gonna go for a spirit break because that's gonna lower its special attack by one stage as it's actually gonna thunder wave us so i've not seen thunder wave on a dragapult that's just gonna knock it directly out grimmsnarl 
is a threat. His last Pokemon is going to be this Barracuda. So, um, we are going to... I don't think there's any scenario where we lose here. We're just going to click Darkest Lariat. He has the Liquidation. That thing... Oh, I thought it was Choice Bandit. It's definitely Life Orb damage. Hot damn, that did a lot. Let's go for a Sucker Punch just to try to catch some extra damage on this thing. As unfortunately, we get fully paralyzed. So Grim Snarl goes down, but now we can bring in whatever we want. And uh, I think we're... Oh, damn, 408 speed. This boy fast as hell. Let's just go into the Dragapult, though. And we are going to ensure we don't miss Draco Meteor by just clicking Shadow Ball. Swift Swim and Propeller, propeller Tails. This thing has an interesting new ability. So, battle number one, actually a pretty decent one. The team seems to be working pretty well. We're going to hop into another one here. I'm having a lot of fun playing in the new Generation 8. I'm excited for when I can actually get some teams made um, on the actual game. But for now, Showdown is a great place to do some testing. So This guy's got the Toxtricity. He's also got his own Dragapult. And um, we're expecting probably going to be an Excadrill lead. Which basically means we have to lead with our own Excadrill. So... Let's see how this goes. He actually leads Dragapult. So, um, this is interesting for us. We could go for the Stealth Rock. He does have his own Excadrill as a spinner. Um, but we could easily switch into... Well, I kind of just want to click Earthquake here, to be honest. I kind of just want to get some damage. We're guaranteed to live due to the Stealth... Or due to the Focus Sash. Let's just go for the EQ. As he's actually just going to U-turn. So, he breaks our Sash. And Dragapult is going to be saved for later. But what is he going to bring in? I'm assuming probably Ferrothorn. Yeah, he does bring in the Ferrothorn here. Uh, so Earthquake does a nice little bit of chip damage. We could go for the Stealth Rock here, so kind of force him to have to bring in and get a spin off later. Let's go for the Stealth Rock, as I'm assuming this thing's probably going to rock itself. But yeah, so he sets up his own Stealth Rock. And I think I'm just going to Rapid Spin that. Get rid of them rocks. We do get hit by the Iron Barbs, unfortunately, and the Rocky Helmet. But we get a Speed Boost, which is kind of nice. Um, Excadrill, I don't think is going to be very useful. He has two ghost types he could switch into a rapid spin later. And I think we're just going to click Earthquake here. Get a little bit of extra damage on the Ferrothorn. Although, he's probably just going to set up his own Stealth Rock here, to be honest. We could bring in Darmanitan. Could save Excadrill for some Death Fodder later. If we bring in Darmanitan, we can scare this thing out with a Flare Blitz. Expect a Chandelure and go for the U-turn. But that's kind of kind of a risky play. You know, let's, let's go for it. We're going to bring in the... Galarian Darmanitan is... Oh, he just Gyro Balls. Wow. I did, not, <laughs> I did not expect that. Really thought he was going to try to set up his rocks. Damn. That is extremely unfortunate for us. Losing my Gar Galarian Darmanitan. I thought I was trying to make a play there. But that, obviously, that was that was not the play. But we do have some options now. We could go into Santa Scorch. Um, we could set up some Coils, which I think might be a good, might be a good option for us. Um, he doesn't really have... I mean, he has the Tyranitar... Which is actually we do have to be worried about. You know, I think we're going to go Dragapult here. Going to just click Flamethrower to play it safe. Um, if he brings in the Chandelure, it's a problem. But no, he's just going to leave in the Ferrothorn. And down you go. So. Um, he actually was typing in the chat. Now he brings in the Tyranitar. We are spexed into Flamethrower. We do have to get the hell on out of here. I don't know what this Tyranitar wants to do. We have Grimmsnarl, which I don't want to hard switch into. I think I might just go Excadrill. Just to just to get some death fodder. Unless this Tyranitar sets up, we'll be in a bad position. But we do still have Ditto. So we're going to go Excadrill here. As it is going to Dynamax. So this boy huge. And he's now going to Max Quake. So he gets a special defense boost from that, which is unfortunate. But we could bring in Grimmsnarl. And I think this is good for us. So let's, let's bring in the Grimmsnarl. Uh, we're going to Dynamax ourselves. Just because we got young Godzilla over here. We kind of have to do that. Um... And we're just going to go right for the Max Starfall. So, interesting he decides to Dynamax there. Knowing I do have the Grim Snarl, I think we should be should be decent here. He's going to Max Guard. The Max Guard activated. We're just going to we're just going to click that again. That is fine. Kind of wasting Dynamax turns here. It goes for the Max Rockfall. And we are thick as hell. So, we're taking that Max Starfall. is going to knock out the Tyranitar. Grim Snarl. OP as hell. So, two down. Now he's going to bring in the Excadrill. Um, we'll be able to outspeed us. I don't really want to waste. I don't think Grimmsnarl is all that useful at this point. This is an interesting battle here. He still has his Dragapult at full. He's probably going to Rapid Spin here. I could bring in my Dragapult, but if he doesn't Rapid Spin, we're going to be in a bad, a bad position here. If he just attacks, I think Dragapult could take one. 
Um, I don't know if a flamethrower knocks out this Excadrill. I think it's probably worth saving our Dragapult. I think we might just stay in here. Go for... Go for the G-Max Snooze. Now he does Earthquake, so... Alright, that is fine. We could have Sucker Punched and got some damage, but... Actually, Sucker Punch would have been a good play, because if he Rapid Spin, we still would have got... Still would have, got, would have gotten that off, but... Alright. Now we got some options. Um, we could go Dragapult and go right for the Flamethrower. Santa Scorch can come in... Um, Unless this thing has... Hmm. Let's go... Let's go Dragapult. We're just gonna click Flamethrower here. Specs Dragapult. I have faith. He is actually going to be a Scarf Excadrill. Which is interesting. Did he say... It? He said that in the chat. It's, it hasn't come up on the top yet. But now he's gonna bring in his own Dragapult. And alright. So we've got ourselves a... A close battle here is three to three. So he's got the Dragapult left, he's got the Toxtricity, which is scary. And then he has the Chandelure. So I think Dragapult is probably gonna be our win condition here. Um, he's gonna go for... Hmm, let's go into the Santa Scorch. I think we do have to save it. I don't wanna risk the speed tie. Just gonna go right for the Shadow Ball, so we can take that nicely. Santa Scorch, thick as hell. Love to see it, all right. Unfortunately, we do not really have much to do against the Dragapult though. I might just go... Ooh, he might go Chandelure here, actually, which we do not have anything against. Hmm. Didn't see an item from this thing, so I'm assuming it's going to be choice in some sort. I'm probably... Probably Specs, but that didn't look like Specs damage. Hmm. Do I just go for a Leech Life here, try to get some health back? If he brings in, this, in the Chandelure... It's going to get hurt by the Stealth Rock. Let's just go... Let's go for a Leech Life here. He just stays in in Shadow Balls. So we do get a special defense drop there, which is unfortunate. We get a little bit of damage with the Leech Life. Um, man, so he's just going to continue to Shadow Ball. If I bring in Ditto, I believe I die. This is this is a tough this is a tough matchup for us. I think it's going to come down to Dragapult having to win a speed tie against this thing, which is freaking scary. The special defense defense drop was unfortunate because we would have been able to live that without it. Uh, but actually, now we can just go Ditto. Just kidding. We're good. We bring in, bring in the Ditto. We're able to get that Imposter. Now we can just go for uh, the Scarf Shadow Ball. He does not have much for this thing. He can bring in the Toxtricity, but I think it dies to two Shadow Balls. And I also don't think it can knock us out in one hit. We're just going to go ahead and click Shadow Ball. Scarf Ditto coming through. And his Dragapult is done for. Next, he brings in his Toxtricity. So, yeah, we literally have nothing to do here other than just click Shadow Ball. Um, if we get the matchup against the Chandelure Dragapult, we'll be able to win it. So I think actually we're set up here. Just gonna shadow ball again. Toxtricity lives it. It is going to boom burst for whatever reason. We are ghost types, sir. Why did you click boom burst? <laughs> we had two ghost types left, so not sure why you did that. But ditto coming through. We just gotta click shadow ball one last time, and we're we're able to come through with the win there. So that was that was actually a close one. Very interesting battle. We're just gonna close these out and let's get ourselves another one, boys. The team seems to be working. We're climbing our way up the ladder. It's, uh, nice. All right. So, this guy's got a Santa Scorch of his own. He also has the Corviknight and the Dragapult. The Umbreon is going to be a little bit of an issue. What is he going to lead here? I think we want to just continue to go Excadrill, to be honest. It's going to be in our best interest to set up Stealth Rock. If that Santa Scorch doesn't have the boots on, it's going to have a bad time. So, let's go Drill, as he actually is going to lead with a Spicy Ther Ferrothorn. Um, we're going to expect this thing to probably set up its own hazards. Um, so... Excadrill usually is pretty decent in these situations. Um, we're not going to rapid spin it yet. He might expect us to do that. He could go into his own Dragapult. Let's just go for an Earthquake here, as he actually just stays in. So now he's going to Leech Seed. And now we're definitely going to rapid spin, although now it's easily predictable if he goes into his... Oh, he's going to protect. Damn. So let's make a play here. He's going to expect the rapid spin. He's probably going to go into his Dragapult. So we could... Make a play. We could go into Darmanitan, I think, is actually a decent option here. We're going to take Stealth Rock damage, but we will be Scarf and we'll be able to get an Icicle Crash. And if he doesn't switch, we could go ahead and, well, if he Gyro Balls, we don't want Darmanitan to do that again. Darmanitan's a tough switch in to these things just because if he takes damage, I mean, he's a hard, he's a tough hard switch in, is what I mean to say. But we could just go with our own Dragapult and hope for a speed tie win. Or we could bring in the Santa Scorch. Which, you know what, let's go into the Santa Scorch here. 
he is going to switch into the Corviknight. So we get a decent matchup. Um, Sense of Scorch does not take any damage from the Stealth Rock, with, which is amazing. And we could potentially set up some coils here. We could get could get a little crazy with the Sense of Scorch. Let's go for a coil as, oh, nope, Brave Bird. That is actually going to knock our asses out. That was a dumb play. I thought for some reason he was going to switch out, expecting me to just knock him out with a fire move. Uh, but obviously, since that thing is faster, I should have just known he's going to Brave Bird. These are the mistakes I'm going to make against against uh, these types of things when I don't know much about the freaking Edgelord over here. Well, now we can just bring in Darmanitan. Um, Flare Blitz is super scary. His switch in is going to be Toxapex. So we could just go for the Earthquake, expecting the Toxapex to come in. Which could be interesting. It's not going to be able to quite knock it out. I really would like to go for an Earthquake against this thing. But what is he going to want to bring in here? He has his own Scent of Scorch. I think we click Earthquake. I don't think he's going to bring in the Umbreon. No way he's going to bring in Spicy. Let's just let's go for the Earthquake. No, he stays in. What? Who stays in here? Goes for the Iron Head and knocks out Darmanitan. Well, we could have easily knocked this thing out. But he stays in there and predicts the over prediction. Like what? What are you doing, sir? I do believe our only chance here is going to be to try to set up a sweep now. We're kind of in a position... Where it looks like we're going to need to go into Grimmsnarl. <laughs> Let's bring this thing in. Let's go for a bulk up here. Uh, we're going to get a little Prankster bulk up. Let's see what old Ed Edgelord is going to do. He's actually just going to U-turn. So, get 16% on us. Now he gets to bring in whatever he wants. The Santa Scorch is probably going to be coming out here. Can't go into the Dragapult. He doesn't have much for Grimmsnarl. There's a chance. I've made two misplays so far this battle. But it's bound to happen eventually. Our first two battles... Went way too well for a team that I have not used before, so. Let's see what old Ravor wants to send in here. He has a tough call. Um, Toxapex, maybe. No, he's just going to go into the Ferrothorn. Okay, so the Ferrothorn is a threat. You can't really do much to this because it's going to it's going to leech seed us, which is definitely to be expected. We could just go for another bulk up, though. Unless he actually just gyro balls. I think another bulk up might be the play. Let's go for another bulk up, get another defense boost. This is going to gyro ball. Uh, it actually does more than I was expecting. Damn it. That is not good. Now we have to go for the Dynamax G-Max Snooze. The next gyro ball does kill us. I honestly didn't expect that to do that much damage with two bulk ups, but... Go for the G-Max Snooze. It is going to knock out the Spicy, so that's good. And now we have a very thick lad, but unfortunately we've just taken too much damage. Um... We do get outsped by everything. If he, his only special attacker would be the Dragapult. He could actually just come in and finish me with. Actually, I don't think that thing even has. What do you have for me? What is, what is Dragoween gonna do to me? We're just gonna go for the G Max news, just to kind of scout what this uh, <laughs> Dragoween wants to do. Halloween Dragon. This boy is a threat. If we've seen anything from this episode, it's that this thing is a freaking threat. He does have to just U-turn. Drago Dragoween does not have anything for me. He can't hit me with a fairy or a, a dragon move because we're fairy. I don't know if he'd be able to knock me out with like a, a Shadow Ball. also don't really know what kind of thing this even is. So He is forced to bring in the Corviknight. He's just basically going to have to stall out these Dynamax turns. Um, he's going to knock out the Corviknight, which is great. So he's down to four. We've we've come back a little bit. We have another turn of Dynamax here. Um, we saw that that U-turn did 6%. He's just going to bring in Luna, which is great. Now we can just click Max Starfall. Ooh, but he's got the Protect. Does get some damage through the protect but it's not quite gonna knock it out so uh, we're back to normal normal sized boy we can just go ahead and click spirit break again unless there's something i'm missing here i don't think there's any we have to click spirit break again yeah he's gonna actually just bring in the crispy bacon which is the sense scorch takes half damage from <laughs> the stealth rock and then spirit break actually knocks it down to two percent now we can click sucker punch if this guy decides to go for coil we're kind of in a tough position we're gonna click sucker punch regardless he does actually attack and sucker punch coming through grim snarl absolute beast i'm really actually starting to like this thing with that prankster bulk up set this up nicely so now he's gonna go in the dragoween i don't know u-turn still shouldn't be able to kill us here right i'm gonna go for another a darkest laureate and just kind of just kind of see we're, we're just letting it ride he is gonna have to dynamax here goes for the max phantasm and that's gonna kill us so Big ol' scary dragon here is Dynamaxed. We could bring in Ditto and be able to get a nice little scarf against this thing. Which I think is what we're going to have to do because now that he's still got his Dynamax, it actually sets us up in a bad position. So we'll bring in the Ditto. 
And we kind of have to go Shadow Ball here. Actually, this I think we still we still are likely going to lose this. And the reason is because I don't think we're going to be able to knock this out. We probably have to go Draco Meteor, which we are going to click. So we go first. Yep, this is going to do 20, 39%, which is unfortunately is not quite enough. So, damn. We do still have our Dragapult left. But we can go Excadrill and basically just die. He does have only one turn left on that. Our own Dragapult, we can't lock ourselves into Draco Meteor though, unfortunately. And he does still just have that damn... Umbreon left. So this is a tough this is a tough battle here. Hmm. Do we go Dragapult and just hope? Just hope to God we win our speed tie? I think that's what we have to do. We're gonna go into our own Dragapult here. Let's hope we win a speed tie. Click Draco Meteor and kind of just see what happens. If anything, I did not expect. Expect to do this well in this battle with all the misplays. Ooh, we do actually outspeed. Draco Meteor is gonna knock it out. Nice. And this allows us to be able to switch out later. Uh, we still have Excadrill, who we can switch into um, on the Toxapex. I'm probably going to go Luna here. He doesn't know that I'm Specs at this point, uh, so he's actually just going to bring in his Toxapex. So he's just going to Scald. Let's go Excadrill, just so we can say we can get another choice with Dragapult later. Bring in the Drill as he does to Scald. We are able to live that. No burn, please. Thank God, no burn. Nice. So we're able to outspeed here. We can just go for an EQ. And the late game Excadrill putting in work. <laughs> yes. So now all he's got left is Luna. And it looks like we caught ourselves a win here. Which was uh, very hard earned. That was an interesting... This has been an interesting battle. He's just going to protect. Unfortunately, the protect is not going to save you now, buddy. Poor little Umbreon. Which actually was a good answer to my team, but... So at this point, he can double protect, or you can just let me Earthquake, yeah. He is going to hit us with a good game down at the bottom. One more Earthquake does finish it off. And that was that was a super good battle. Honestly, that was, that was insane. I really like this team a lot. So, I'm very surprised we were able to go undefeated. Um, I'm usually pretty bad when it comes to playing in new generations, especially in OU, but I feel like I've got a pretty decent grip of how the metagames work in these days. So, uh, we are going to end the episode here, though, though guys. Um, I will be back with some more showdown videos if this is something you guys are into. Make sure to hit that like button. Uh, leave a comment and let me know kind of how you guys are liking the competitive um, the competitive Gen 8. If you guys think Dynamax is overpowered. I honestly think that it, it could work well. Um, it does have its counters. It's definitely a little bit overpowered. But I think that... I think, it's, I think it's a fun new mechanic. I really do like it a lot. But yeah. Anyways, guys. We are out of here. Peace out.